So, this is Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, our first new guided reading book for this term. A lot of our work is going to be coming off this, so I hope you enjoy the story. Some of you may already know it. So, first part, immersion. And that's when we read and have a good think about what we're doing. And this is going to be fairly, fairly straightforward. Have a look at the back cover and the blurb on the back. I want the cover and the blurb on the back, of course. Have a good look. What do you think this story is going to be about? Some of you may already know. Some of you might not have read it before. What do you think will happen in the story? Are there any clues that tell you what might happen? Who the villains are? Who the heroes are? Again, have you read this story before? If you did have, do you know? Can you remember? Have a good long think. Switch over when you're ready. And lastly, who is the author and the illustrator? Have you heard of them before? Mm. Do you know any other of the, the author's books? So, reading. I want you to read pages one to eight. Remember to note down somewhere, a piece of paper maybe, or just in your head, any difficult words. And think about the strategy you, you, you would use to read those words. I've included a nice picture to keep you going. When you've read, maybe even when you've read twice, go on to the next slide. And I want you to think about these questions. You don't have to write anything down. I just want you to think. I'm more or less interested in how Roald Dahl works this chapter, because it's a key chapter in the book. I'm thinking about how he uses sentences, how he uses illustrations, how he shows what Charlie is like. First of all, why does Roald Dahl use short sentences at the beginning of the chapter? Is there any link to the illustrations there? What's he trying to do? How does Roald Dahl show that Charlie's family is very poor? How does he describe them? What kinds of things do they do? What kinds of things do they have to eat? That kind of thing. Why does Roald Dahl use capital letters for his whole words sometimes? You'll find those towards the end of the chapter. He's using capital letters for whole words. Why do you think that might be? What's he trying to do? And what does Charlie love more than anything else? And why is that important to the story? That's it. That's all. Have a think. You know you want to reread it and have another thing. Have a closer look because there's quite a lot going on in this chapter. Anyway, we'll leave it till next time when we start thinking about looking at questions.